Well, here they are, 10 Strathmore 500 Series Mixed Media Journals completed. I started the first one in October 2014, and I just finished up number 10, 2018. I've journaled in other books as I've gone along and did different things, but I kept working in these Strathmore 500 Series Journals. I think there's about 64 pages in each journal. Um, not all the pages are complete. Most of them are, though, I think. So that's still well over 600 pages of journaling completed. Now, I don't have hundreds of journals like Liz Steele, but to me, this is a big accomplishment. And today, I'm going to do an art journal flip of number 10, which I just finished up. And as you can see, number 10 looks a lot different than number 1. Number 1 is nice and clean and neat. A lot of notes and precisely done work. I was quite the perfectionist when I did number 1. And if you look at number 10, the cover is all beat up. There's all kinds of work in here with collages and acrylics and things pasted in. And it's quite different from the first one. So let's get to it. Here is number 10. I started this journal around June 2017. And even though it says January 2018, I did go back and finish up a couple of pages. The first page was one of the last pages that I completed. And I had put black gesso on the page earlier and then never did anything with it. So the other morning uh, during Art and Oatmeal, I went back with some gouache that I had on a palette and painted a picture of my friend's, uh, my friend Carol's pitcher plant. So this is gouache on black gesso, and this was one of the last things that I did. I took my journal with me to um, Millersville Native Plant, Festival. This was in June 2017. I went to a lecture on the pawpaw tree and I sketched this pawpaw during the lecture and took some notes. And here's some other notes I was taking about um, bees. And then down here is a completely different item. These are some notes on different kinds of lines to do when you're sketching. And then I had a journaling journey to Hog Island in Maine, June 2017. This is the fish house on Hog Island. It's an Audubon camp for birders and artists and photographers. And this is where we meet. This was the trunk of an old apple tree in the yard outside the fish house. And they had a little wooden cutout which you can stick your face through. Um, so you look like you're a puffin. And a little puffin chick down here. Across the bottom of the page I have a bunch of puffin heads. Hog Island is known for its nesting ospreys. And for its work in bringing back the puffins to the bay. There's some lovely pink slippers that are blooming on Hog Island. This is done in watercolor. And a little bit of the scenery from the camp. We went on a sunset cruise around the island and saw a loon. And I sketched a very large loon. I don't know why I made him so big, but it kind of fills up the whole page. There's a little edge of the island there. Tried to make the sky look a little bit about uh, like sunset. This is in watercolors. Some more watercolors. Uh, this was at Harbor Island. Here's my little crabby down here. And I was trying to draw the rock formations and getting some help that day with trying to make things look like they go off into a distance. I was waiting to go into the dining hall for breakfast one morning and I was watching the boats and I got out my journal very very quickly just tried to capture the boats that were out near the island before breakfast. More from Hog Island. We went out to Eastern Egg Island. This is where the puffins and the terns 
um, breed, raise their young. And then again, I do another very large puffin and a turn. Practicing drawing nests with Jean McKay. There's a little light direction here and how to make the shadows for something that's cup shaped. Went with my friend Carol to a museum and we got a card with these flags on it. So we put a map of Maine in the middle. Well, it's just mostly the area where Hog Island is. And then around the edge, I put these flags. I got this idea from Carol. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie. Each flag means something different. More on Hog Island. This exercise is called Hour by Hour, Minute by Minute. So once every hour you stop and you sketch something that's close by. A lot of this is done in colored pencil. From breakfast time where our nap napkins are hanging up to seeing the flowers, the old trees, to supper time, eating lobster for dinner. We were sketching things from the intertidal zone around the island. I did a very large horseshoe crab and a rock with some brown algae on it. A very large seashell. Vitamin C. Everybody needs their vitamin C. I did this at the North Museum on June 24th. But back to June 15th, I just did a sketch. I wanted to do sort of like a negative sketch with the trees in ink and the background in color. This page and this page were some of the last pages that I did. I had done a background on this page with some paint and some gesso and some stamping. And I started painting the tiger lily stems over here with acrylic. And then I did nothing. I left them for months and months and months and months. And just the other morning I went back with the gouache and quickly just put in some tiger lilies and finished up the tiger lily stems and I used a Pentel brush pen to do the black lines. This is a watercolor purslane and ink that I had done last summer. I love the shape of the purslane leaves and the pattern of how the leaves unfold. This was working at the North Museum last July. I was trying to do negative painting for this blanket flower. And on this one, I was using an ink that is water soluble. So I sketched it in ink and then I put the watercolors on top just to see how they would run into the water in the different colors. Just experiments with blanket flowers. This was a fun page to do. Heart stones, river rocks, and purple petals. I did this with watercolor pencils and glazing medium. Glossy glazing medium. Just a variety of pebbles from the creek. Now the next three pages go together. I was watching a video uh, by Danny Gregory on travel journaling. And he said, you don't have to go someplace special to do some travel journaling. He, sa he said, even if you just spent three days in Parsippany, that you can do some journaling. So I've been through Parsippany, Parsippany many times, and but never once stopped there to visit any place. So I made up three places. This one is the Pastel, Pastel Mountains, the Parsippany Pastel Mountains, and the river, and the strawberry boulders. Uh, you can read the story on my blog, but this place is completely made up, although some of the geological history of the area in the story is true. This page was about the trees in Parsippany because Parsippany is the tree city. And of course, this is not the tree that grows in Parsippany, but if you read the story on the blog, some of the information in 
this is true. The rest is completely made up. And the parts like the seeds flown on the Space Shuttle Columbia 1997 is true. So when you read my stories, you, really it's a puzzle for you to figure out which parts are real and which parts are made up. I was so proud of this page because somebody emailed me and actually wanted to know where this was so that they can go and visit it. And then the third page was about Lady Gaga, who actually did some recordings in Parsippany. And this is a story about how she got her name, which is not true, but she's painted here in the makeup for the Day of the Dead. And you can read that story on my blog. This is done on a black uh, gesso background. This was an experiment that kind of fell apart. I don't remember what it was I put on the page, layers of different things, but it started flaking off. As you can see here, it's still flaking. And so I scraped it and painted it and scraped it and painted it and tried to get a layer that wasn't falling off and then negatively painted around these shapes to do some flowers and use the Pentel brush pen to add the black to the page. So I hope it doesn't flake off any more than it already has. This was just a quick page I did using a knife, a very thick acrylic on this page. I think I had some medium, some acrylic medium on a swirl on this sun over here. I like to do a lot of texture. The apples are ready to be harvested. I have an apple orchard across the street from where I live and they had the, the ladders out for picking the apples and I was just inspired to do something quick. In Cheshire, Connecticut, doing a little urban sketching. I have a really hard time with urban sketching. Um, getting the angles on the buildings and everything. I've blogged about that. But this is a church on the green in Cheshire, Connecticut. This is a What's on My Mind page. Zinnias and Zabulons. I went out in my front yard and the zinnias were blooming. And there were zillions of Zabulons, which is this little skipper butterfly here. And I did a quick page with watercolors and some ink. And I like the way the words came out. Very, very colorful, just like the zinnias. If you want butterflies, plant zinnias. Here is a fun nature journaling page. This is August is Purple Mushroom Month. I went on a botany walk and I took some notes and when I got home I did some sketching. Again, some of this is real and some of this is totally made up. For instance, this mushroom looks like a purple umbrella. This mushroom, mushrooms are the fruiting bodies of fungi, so I had some fruit coming out of this mushroom over here. The part of the mushroom that's under the ground is called mycelium, and there's a very famous book called Mycelium Running. So I made a little running man out of here, out of the mycelium down here. There is a mushroom called um, Hen of the Woods. It does not look like this. I just made it look like a purple and pink chicken. There's another mushroom that's called um, Old Men, Old Man. And I have this quote from Hamlet. It says, Old men have gray beards, that their faces are wrinkled, their eyes purging thick amber or plum tree gum, and they have a plentiful lack of wit. So I've kind of made my mushroom with a beard. We had a lot of rain that summer, and I have the bits of the mushroom. This part of the mushroom is actually the part that's underneath over here. But I have my mycophobia down here, these little tiny people who are afraid of these giant mushrooms. This was during the uh, solar eclipse last summer, 
2017, working at the North Museum in Lancaster. And to show the different kinds of eclipses, I have a lunar moth totally covering a sunflower. So this is a total lunar eclipse. On this page, I have a moon snail partially eclipsing a sunflower. So this is a partial eclipse. These are in watercolor with a little ink. And on this page, I have the story about what these are. And then I did a bunch of collage on this page. I did collage and I believe it was acrylics. And then I made these birch tree trunks, which I liked a lot. And this space was empty, so I just kind of went over and filled in that space too. So you can see bits of the collage paper from underneath. I used a palette knife to scrape the paint across to get the texture on the birch trees. Another fun day at the North Museum, it was Dinosaur Day. And everybody was drawing really nice, realistic dinosaurs. And I drew this big-headed dinosaur running away from an erupting volcano. Not very realistic. I guess this is my journal to be not very realistic for some reason. Remembering the Twin Towers, September 11th, 2017. Just an abstract page. My mother called me up to tell me that it was a full corn moon. So I did this in, I believe it's, it's gouache. I did a dancing birch tree and the light of the full corn moon. I think it got glitter on both of these pages. I was just having a lot of fun in this journal. Again, some of this rogue nature journaling. This is how I paint hurricanes. August 24th, this is Harvey heads to Houston. This is Hurricane Harvey. September 9th, this is Hurricane Irma aims for the Keys. And now it's fall time and I have these wicked pink and orange pumpkins. Love this page. And my little character, this is my character Honeydew. And it's Honeydew picks a pumpkin. This page, um, I love the colors of the sumac, the staghorn sumac when it was blooming. This wasn't exactly how I planned this page to come out, but that's how it came out. Um, I might try this again. Just a lot of bright colors and a sketch of a sumac on top. This is the last page that I did. It's not the last page in the book, but it's the last page I finished up. I had found some uh, butterfly wings, a dead butterfly, painted lady butterfly, and I had put them in the journal with some medium. But I got medium kind of all over the page. And my idea was to sketch a fairy and then do it in watercolors. And so when I went back to the page, I sketched the fairy and I started painting it. But the, the medium that I put on the page wouldn't let me do my watercolors the way I wanted to. So then I started um, sketching with some colored pencil on top of the watercolors to fill it in, and it still wasn't working right. And then I gave up on the page and just finished it the other day. And what I used to cover up some of that space were just these Sharpie paint pens. So it would cover over where the, I don't know, the area, just nothing would stick in that area. Um, so this page is a great big mishmash of different things, and there are little tiny bits about it that I love. Here and there, these leaves and the flower over here. But as it goes together as a whole page, who knows? But it was an experiment. It was fun. And you just keep moving on. Day of the Dead, another fun page. This one was done at the Noldy Environmental uh, Education Center 
we're working with the kids and doing pictures of skulls and skeletons. And I just did a very fun page and it actually has some glow in the dark marker on there. And then we held it up to blue light so it would glow in the dark. Sketching at Noldy Forest in December. Some holly and berries. We were talking about seeing red in nature. So in something else that's red in nature is an apple. I decided to do a green man tree, practicing for a larger piece that I was going to do, a Celtic tree. And here's a really fun project that I worked on. These are called Tunnel Pages. It says, gnomes are the protectors of minerals, rocks, the soil, and all of the plants that grow in it. They are the earth fairies whose name means earth dweller. My idea was to take one of my amethyst crystals and create a tunnel page. So all I did was I ripped this out. I have a video on this. And I do the outside of the rock and the gnome. And then the second layer, I put in some mica rock, very thin sheets of mica with some matte medium. And then for the last layer, I just sketched the purple amethyst crystal. So that's my amethyst geode around the geode, and I like how the face pops through. This page was just coming back from physical therapy when my neck was really bothering me, and these are my cervical vertebrae and my funky shaped discs all around, but I like how colorful it came out. This is watercolor and colored pencil. Same thing with this. This is watercolor and ink and a little white pen on top. This was just doodling during breakfast. Some designs that I saw on a box of tea. But I did put in some little characters here and there. There's a dragonfly and a bird. There's a rose. A fish. Fish at the top. November birds. This was another free page where I just put down a lot of watercolors. And then I sketched the birds on top and colored them with colored pencil on top of the watercolor. And now we're up to Christmas time. And here's my funky Christmas tree, which was a scribble. You start off with something very geometric. And you just get more free as you go along. So by the time you get down to the side of the tree, it's just a big scribble. I put some glitter on there. And on the last page was traveling to Connecticut um, for Thanksgiving. And I just did this sketch with colored pencils. I did a watercolor background first and put colored pencils on top. Over the Hudson River and through the New Jersey woods to the Connecticut Thanksgiving feast. This journal was so much fun, so many different techniques, just playing and playing and playing and playing. I really enjoyed working in this journal, as you can tell. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.